Welcome to Amazing Dinosaurs. I'm Dave, and this is a collection of Jurassic World figures versus their custom repainted versions. Starting with the biggest figures, I've got a super colossal T-Rex figure right here in the original orange painting. You see it's got yellow eyes. And over on the left side here, I've got the custom painted version. This is now a bright red T-Rex with yellow striping and black along the top. Next, I've also got the super colossal Velociraptor blue figure with the green coloring and the blue stripe down the side. And this figure looks pretty similar to the movie. And if we move over to the left side here, this is the custom repainted version, now painted to look like an Endoraptor. You can see it's got the black body with now the gold stripe running down its side. For the next original figure, we've got the mighty Indominus Rex figure from Camp Cretaceous. It has an action feature on its tail that moves its jaw open and closed, as well as a button on its back for slashing its claws. We're gonna put this original figure on the right side with the other originals, and we're gonna grab the custom painted version of that Indominus Rex right here. This repainted figure is now purple and blue. It's got some orange stripes and really looks like a very crazy looking dinosaur. Very different compared to the original version. So we're gonna put that over here on the left side with the repainted super colossal figures. And I've actually got another custom colored Indominus Rex figure right here. This figure I bought quite recently and it is in the camo green coloring. And my favorite part is that it has a bunch of blood coloring in its mouth. So we're gonna put this on the custom repainted side to face off with the original versions. Next is the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus figure. This figure is the original version, comes in the brown with the darker brown and the red spine and face. It has an action button on its head to open and close the jaw. Now let's put this on the original side and let's check out the repainted version right here. Now this Spinosaurus is also brown colored for the most part like the original version over there, but its red is a whole lot darker and it has this blue along its spine as well as a lot more detailing and different shades of brown all over its body. So we're gonna put this Spinosaurus on the custom repainted side. Next up is this huge T-Rex figure that I believe is from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie. It has a really cool chomping action when you press its tail upwards as well as a roaring action as well. Plus you can move its torso around by moving the tail. So we're gonna put this one on the original side right over here. And now we're gonna check out the custom repainted version. It is now in a camouflage coloring, which is one of my favorite colorings for these dinosaur figures. And of course this figure too has the really cool chomping action as well as the roaring action. Now let's go ahead and put this dinosaur on the custom repainted side. The next dinosaur is this massive Terran T-Rex figure. This is the original version and it has the brown on the sides with the darker brown on top and two action buttons on its back. One for that massive tearing action and the other button for a huge tail swinging action. Now let's put this T-Rex over here on the original side and let's check out the custom repainted version. And here it is. It still has that brown coloring, although it's a lot darker, but the coolest part of this custom repainting is that they colored in the battle damage slashes on its legs and on its torso. And overall, I think looks a whole lot more realistic. And don't forget, it has that same awesome Terran action too. And now we're gonna put this over here on the custom colored side. The next dinosaur in this versus collection is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. This originally colored version is brown. It has some gray detailing along the top and it has a single action button on its back for a massive roaring action. All right, now let's put this over here on the original side. And now let's check out the repainted version. And this one, I actually repainted myself. And I think I made it look quite a bit different. It's now a camo green color. You can see the green on its side and it fades to a brown on the top. It still has the yellow eyes like the original version, although you notice that the pupils on this one are circle and I decided to go with the long and narrow pupils. And of course it has that awesome, huge roaring action as well. 
All right, and this one goes right over here on the custom repaint side. The next dinosaur is this Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex figure with the battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. And it comes in a darker brown, almost an orange color compared to many of these other T-Rexes. So we're gonna put this on the original side right over here. And here is the custom repainted version of that Jurassic World Dominion dinosaur, now in a camouflage color. You can see it's got tan striping along the top, some bright green on the sides, and it's still got that battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. So let's go ahead and put this on the custom repainted side. Next is another classic brown T-Rex with a little bit of darker brown coloring on the top. This is the original coloring, and it has a button at the top of its head for the chomping and roaring. So let's put this on the original side right here. And here is the custom repainted version. Totally different looking. Look at that bright red with that glowing yellow along the black. Pretty similar actually to the super colossal version that I have up here. And of course this one too has the jaw chopping action. And look, even the inside of its mouth is like a dark black red color. So let's set this one on the custom colored side to face off with its original version right there. Next up is an older T-Rex figure from the first Jurassic World movie, and this one is made by Hasbro. It's a tan T-Rex, uh, quite a bit smaller than many of the newer figures here, and it has a single button on its back for a jaw chomping action. So let's go ahead and put this on the original side here. And now let's check out the custom repainted version here. It is now in a bright red coloring with black spots all over its body and a bright green underbelly. Of course, it has the same button for that same jaw chomping action. So now we're gonna put this on the repaint side over here directly opposite of its original version. Next is a Pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. This is a basic figure, but it still has some pretty cool coloring. It's got the black along the back. You can see feather texturing all over and the red on the rest of its body. We're gonna put this on the original side here. And now let's check out the repainted version. And this one is a whole lot brighter. You can see that it's still got plenty of red on its body, but now it also has some blue on its leg, on the top of its head, and the feathers on the very top of its head are colored as well. Not very realistic looking, but pretty cool overall. So we're gonna put this on the repainted version over here. I've got another raptor figure to check out. This is an Atrociraptor figure. And just like in the movie, it is the classic white with brown striping. And this figure is a basic version as well, so there is no action button. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on the right side alongside all the other original figures. Now it's time to check out the custom repainted version of that figure. This version is now super bright yellow. It's got some orange and then the brown on the top. And the coolest part are these dark red eyes. So let's put this figure on the custom repainted side right over here. Next up for the originals, we've got an herbivore. This is a Cynoceratops. And this original version comes in the green coloring with some tan striping. It's got some bright orange along its face and one single action button on its back for a head moving action. Now let's put this figure on the original side and here is the custom repainted version. Check it out, it is now in brown coloring. It has some black circles on its back and instead of the orange like the original version, it has bright purple along the front of its frill. This figure is pretty cool looking and overall pretty realistic, I think. So we're gonna put this on the custom repainted side. Next up is another four-legged dinosaur. This is the Triceratops, I believe from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got some dark green coloring on the back, some swamp green coloring on the front and some bright orange on its frill. And as you can hear, it has some sound effects and a head ramming action when you press down on its body. So we're gonna go ahead and put this Triceratops figure way in the back over here. And now here is the custom repainted version. It is now in a bright gray coloring along the sides and a darker gray along the top. It has these red spikes all along the top of its frill and some dark green eyes. 
And we're gonna put this Triceratops on the left side to face off right next to its original version. Next up for the original side is this Sarcosuchus figure. This is a really long dinosaur. It's got some bright blue on the sides with some orange and red, and then the purple on the top. Plus it has an action button that when you move its tail, it moves its head, as well as a chomping button on its tail too. Now let's go ahead and put this on the original side here and check out the repainted version. This Sarcosuchus figure, obviously the exact same as this one, except it is a bright green color on the sides. It has a brown coloring along the top. I think this coloring would make it blend into the jungle a whole lot more. And of course it has the same chopping action and the ability to move its head around too. And we're gonna put this one right here on the left side. Now let's check out this figure from the Hammond collection. This is a Baryonyx figure. It has some pretty classic coloring with the gray on the sides and then the white that is outlining the dark blue along the top. And since this is the Hammond collection figure, it is super poseable all over its body. So now let's put this on the original side right here. And let's check out the repainted version of that Baryonyx, now actually made to look like a Spinosaurus. So just like the Spinosauruses that we saw earlier, it has the brown side and then the red spine on the top with the blue circles on its spine. And just like the original version here, it of course is super poseable. So now let's put this right here on the custom repainted side. dinosaur figure is the stop and escape T-Rex. As you can see, the original painting was brown with some gray detailing on top. So let's see if we can spice that up a little bit. After I got it all primed up, I started with a soft tan color for the underbelly, which is typical for what you'd see in many T-Rex figures. Next, and my favorite part of this T-Rex, I painted the upper body, the head, and legs a jungle green color. I'm super excited for this one as I don't have that many green T-Rexes yet. I think I only have one other. I wanted to make this dinosaur figure look pretty realistic with a camouflage and natural look, so I took a lot of care to blend in the green into the tan for this one. Then, to bring some texture to all those green parts, I dry brushed a soft brown color to bring out all the texture and wrinkles of its skin. For the mouth, I chose a dark pink color. Looks like I forgot to prime some of the mouth. Whoops. Then for the darkest color of this T-Rex, I chose a dark brown to go from the top of the head all the way down to the tail. This will be the last major color for this dinosaur. I also used the brown to paint down the side of the body in random patterns and stripes to make it look a little more realistic, as well as on the front of the legs, which I really thought brought the whole body together. And of course, I brought some of that dark brown onto the face too, especially around the eyes to give it more shading and detail. Then I took a brush and dry brushed a light gray color onto all the brown areas to give that a little bit more texture. I think this made it look a whole lot more realistic and looks a lot better than just the flat brown color. Then for the eyes, after I added another white base, I painted the eyes a yellow color with narrow pupils. I wanted this T-Rex to look intimidating, but not too scary. And for the final touches, I painted the teeth sparkling white and the nails a dark, dark black. And there we are, it is all done. I'm really happy with this T-Rex. And like I said, I'm super excited to add another green T-Rex to my collection. Next up is the Atrociraptor figure from the new Jurassic World Dominion series. 
This figure has the iconic coloring already. I'm sure you recognize it from the movie, but I wanted to replace it with something much more bright and eye-grabbing. So to start it off, I colored the entire dinosaur in a bright yellow color. This will be the base coat for my design. For the next layer, I chose an orange color to paint along the top of the yellow from the head all the way to the tip of the tail. And also on parts of the legs and the arms. It's a pretty similar color to the yellow because I want it to smoothly fade from the yellow into the orange and to the next color that I'll be adding on. Next, for the coolest and most dramatic color of this dinosaur, I added brown to the very top of the body and around the eyes, and I added random stripes going down the sides of the body. It's a pretty dramatic look, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Now that all the big colors are done, I took a lighter brown color and dry brushed all along the lighter parts of its body. Look at how it brings out the texture of its skin all over. For the final touches, I painted all the claws black and the eyes blood red. These dinosaurs are pretty scary in the movie, and I think red eyes are the perfect color to reflect that. With that, the Atrociraptor is all done. Look at how bright it is. This is one of my favorite dinosaurs that I've painted, and I really think it'll pop out from all the other dinosaur figures on my display shelf. Next up is the Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops. The original had a green and brown color combo, and I wanted to switch that up with something entirely different. First to start off, I painted the belly and the entire underside a light pink color. What color do you think I'm going to combo this color with? If you guessed gray, then you are correct. I had seen a Stegosaurus figure painted a similar way and wanted to try it out for myself. I used this gray to color the entire rest of the body. I'll be doing a few more colors throughout though. Next, to add some more variance to its body, I used a darker gray color all along the top of the body and along the top of the bony frill behind its head. I'm really happy with how this frill is turning out. I chose a light tan color for the horns and the mouth. This is pretty similar to the original. Since these are bony parts of the body, I just think that this color works great with it. I chose a white color for all the toes on its feet and a green color for its tiny little eyes. This is a really tricky part because they're so small, but I think it turned out pretty good. And just a tiny little black dot for the pupils in its eyes. Now for the best part, I chose a bright red color for the bony parts sticking out of its frill because I wanted these to stand out and be the highlight of this Triceratops. I wanted to bring a little bit more red to the body as well, so I also dry brushed that same red color onto the back of the Triceratops. It's pretty subtle though, it's only just enough to make it look a tiny bit more red. And that's it! This one turned out super cool. I really like how the light pink, the gray, and the red all fit together. This is the Sarcosagus figure from Jurassic World. It's not too bad with the painting originally, but let's see if we can spice it up a bit. I started by painting the belly a lime green color. Many dinosaurs, as I'm sure you've noticed already, have lighter underbellies. Next, I painted a camo green color to the sides. This will help it blend into a swamp or jungle setting. Yeah. 
Then for the very top of the dinosaur, I chose a dark brown color. And this color went all the way to the tip of the tail. I bet if this dinosaur was in the water, other dinosaurs probably wouldn't even see it because it looks like a log in the water. I also added some brown detailing around the eyes to help bring out the color of the eyes when I paint those in. Next, I painted the mouth a soft pink color, then I added a darker pink wash to bring out the texture of the tongue and the other parts of the mouth. I'm a really big fan of dry brushing or adding a wash to a figure because this really brings out a lot of the texture. Then I chose a dark gray wash to add to the top of the dinosaur to bring out more texture there, although it is pretty subtle. I think it makes it look just a little bit more gritty, a little more dirtier like it would in real life. Then I added a brown wash to the belly and underside of the dinosaur to bring out the texture of that area and to make it look a bit more gritty too. Then I carefully painted all the claws black. These weren't colored differently in the original version, but I wanted to bring more attention to them. And now for the super tricky part, painting the teeth. I chose a bright white color and I had to do multiple layers. I couldn't even count how many teeth there were on this sarcosagus. And finally, I painted the eyes a bright white color to pop out from that brown background and I chose to give this dinosaur narrow pupils as well. And there it is, it is all finished. This is a super camouflage dinosaur and I'm really happy with how it turned out. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Pyroraptor figure. As you can see, originally it had some pretty basic coloring, nothing too special, it's just mostly red and black. So to start with my own design for this figure, I painted the feet, the hands, and some parts of the face a light gray color. These are parts of the dinosaur that didn't have that many feathers on them, so it's more of just a skin coloring. Now for the best part, I chose a bright fiery red for the bulk of the feathered body. In my opinion, this dinosaur is not meant to blend into its surroundings, so I really want to make it pop. I painted this red all over the torso, the tail, the arms, and a little patch on the leg right there where you can see the feathers. For the remaining parts of the body, I wanted to try a dark blue color to contrast that fiery red. I used this blue on the legs, on the belly, a little bit of the underside of the tail, and on the top of the head. Now one thing I especially wanted to do was bring out the texture of those feathers all over its body. So I used a dark brown gray wash and I put that all over the red to really accentuate those feather designs. Then I blended the gray color of the skin into the other colors and also dry brushed the gray into the blue parts to bring out the texture of those areas. Those blue parts were pretty dark before, but with that gray on top, you can really see the texture. Next, I dry brushed a subtle yellow color near the neck to add some variance in the color, just enough to make it look different from the rest of the body. And for those huge feathers on the top of the head, I chose orange as a complementary color to the rest of the red, and I added a little bit of yellow at the top to bring out more texture of that big feather on the top. To match that feather on the top of its head, I used yellow for the eyes. And once again, I painted narrow black pupils to give it a more menacing look. For the final touch, I painted all the claws dark black for contrast and the teeth a bright white since those weren't actually colored at all in the original version. And we're done! This is a pretty bright and wild looking dinosaur and totally different from the other ones I've painted so far and quite a bit different from the original version.
First up is the Camp Cretaceous Extreme Chompin' Spinosaurus. Let's open this up. All right, this is a huge figure. I have a few other Spinosauruses like this one. So the coloring's pretty realistic. It's not too crazy. It's brown on most of its body. It's got the red detailing on the spine, on the face. It's got those orange eyes. Its body is pretty adjustable. You can move the ankles, the legs, the tail, the arms. You can even adjust the neck like that, which is pretty cool. And it's got a button on the top of its head that you can use for chomping. Next up is the Camp Cretaceous Snap Squad Spinosaurus. This is a little one. You can still see that iconic spine right there. Let's open it up. As you can see, most of its limbs are pretty loose, so they actually just dangle there. And that is because you can snap this onto something and then it'll just dangle there. And just like the big Spinosaurus that we saw, this one has those dark orange eyes too. Let's check out our other Snap Squad figures. Next up is the Triceratops from the Snap Squad series. This figure is a dark red, kind of like a maroon color. It's got the yellow eyes and the yellow detailing right on the front. It's got the three horns, and just like the other, its legs are dangly, so that when you snap it onto something, its legs will dangle like that. And last but not least, the Snap Squad Carnotaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs. Let's get this opened up. All right, here it is. This Carnotaurus has a lighter color than most of the Carnotaurus figures I have. You can see it's got a light brown and then dark brown on the top. But like all the other Carnotauruses I have, you can see it's got the battle damage right there on its nose. That's really cool. All right, let's put all these new figures on the shelf. Let's start with the Spinosaurus right in the dead center of this empty shelf right here. These Spinosauruses are usually pretty hard to balance, but this one's working out. And let's snap these Snap Squad figures right next to the Spinosaurus. Gonna hang the Carnotaurus upside down, right on the shelf. This little Spinosaurus, I think I'll attach to the big one, right on its hand. And the Triceratops, where should we put that one? Ooh, I know, let's hang it right on the banner right here. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Let's fill up my shelves with the rest of these Camp Cretaceous figures. Let's start with this Ceratosaurus right here. This is gray and red mostly. You can see it's got some brown detailing on it. It's got an action button for its jaws. That is really cool. Let's put it front and center right next to the Spinosaurus. Here we've got a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is like a brown orange color. You can see it's got a button on the top to control its jaw. And you can adjust the neck just like the Spinosaurus. And you can also adjust the rest of the limbs too. Let's put this one on this right shelf, right in the center. Next up, a huge Indominus Rex with battle damage on the side. This is the battle damage that you can turn on and off with the button. That is super cool. And still, the rest of the figure is pretty adjustable. Adjust the legs and the arms and the neck too. And there's the action button on its tail to control its face. Let's put this Indominus Rex right next to the Spinosaurus, right in the middle. There we go. Here is another T-Rex. This T-Rex, when you move the tail, it controls the head. So it looks pretty realistic. This T-Rex is brown in color as well. You can see the browner stripe right along the top of its body and a light underbelly. There we go, two T-Rexes side by side. Here is a slightly smaller carnivore. This is the Carnotaurus. And just like the Snap Squad figure that we saw earlier, you can see that battle damage right on its nose. How cool is that? And it's pretty detailed on its body. You can see there's black specks all over its mostly red body with the lighter underbelly. So let's find a place for this on the shelf. Let's go over to this side right here. Put it right next to this Velociraptor. 
Here's another giant Indominus Rex, but check out the coloring on this. This is totally different than the gray one that we have over there. This is a custom colored one. So it's got blue, purple, orange, and black, plus those green eyes right there. That is really cool. Let's find a spot for this on the shelf. Let's put it on the other side of the Spinosaurus. All right, there it is. This first shelf is looking pretty full already. Check this one out. This is a gray and yellow Allosaurus, I believe. Look at that action button right on its back to control its jaw. This is pretty cool. And it's a fully adjustable body as well. Let's put these right next to the T-Rexes. Here is a T-Rex with a very special feature. With this action button, you can see that it has a tearing action. That is pretty unique. Not that many figures that I have do that. So let's find a place for this right next to the Carnotaurus. Here is an herbivore. This is a Triceratops. It's a red maroon color with brown detailing on the top. And it's got an action button that you can press to roar. Seems like the sound effects aren't really working right now, but this is a pretty detailed figure. Looks like a little discoloration on its leg right there. Or maybe that's intentional. I actually can't tell. Let's put this on this higher up shelf right here. And we've still got a few more T-Rexes in here. This one is a battle damage, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw earlier. And press the button to turn the battle damage on and off. And this T-Rex is fully posable, so when you open its mouth, it actually stays open. You don't have to press a button. Let's put this right next to this other Terran T-Rex right here. There we go, got a little more space. Here is, I believe, another Allosaurus. This Allosaurus, though, is yellow with blue coloring all over its body. You can see that there's two different tones of blue the light blue and the dark blue, plus the two action buttons on its back, one to control the jaw and one to control the arms. Let's put this right next to this other Allosaurus. All right, looking awesome. Here is a Baryonyx. This has probably one of my favorite colorings of the Baryonyx figures that I have. Two tones of green, got the dark green in the front and the bright green in the back, got some yellow detailing and some bread right next to its eyes. Let's put this right next to the Triceratops up top here. Here's a weird looking dinosaur. This is a Sarcosagus. It's got a dark purple, it's got some orange, got red, and then the rest of its body is like a blue gray color. You can move all of its legs, and it's pretty adjustable actually, and you can move the tail to control the head. Let's put this right in between the Spinosaurus and the Indominus Rex. Oh, we've got another T-Rex right here. This T-Rex I don't think has battle damage or anything like that. So this is just a normal T-Rex. It's got the button on the top of its head for the roaring action. Let's put this T-Rex right next to the other T-Rexes. Here's an interesting looking herbivore. This is a Kentrosaurus. Check out those huge spikes right along its shoulders as well as the spikes on its tail, just like a Stegosaurus. And this Kentrosaurus has a sliding action to swing those spikes back and forth. That is really cool. Let's put this right next to the Baryonyx up top right here. Here's another Baryonyx. This one has bright orange detailing right on the top of its head. The rest of its body is brown and a dark gray blue color right along the top. Let's check out this action button too. Let's put it next to these T-Rexes and Carnotaurus right here. This dinosaur, I believe, is an Aranosaurus. It's pretty unique in its shape and color. Look at that bright blue right along its mouth. It's got some yellow on its spine, and it's got a light underbelly as well. Plus, this Aranosaurus has a slide action. All right, let's 
let's find a place for this. Let's put it right next to the sarcosagus, right up front. Here is another herbivore. This is a Cynoceratops. You can see it looks pretty similar to the Triceratops, but the big difference is in its horns and its face. Plus, it's got an action button on the back to control its head as well. Let's put this Cynoceratops right next to the Kentrosaurus, right up top. Here's another predator. This is a medium-sized figure, and this is the Metriocanthosaurus. It's got the action button on its back to control its jaw, and the rest of its body is like a yellow-green color and darker green along the top. Let's put this right in front of these T-Rexes right over here. Here's another predator. This is an Albertosaurus. This dinosaur has an all-green body with orange detailing right along its back all the way up to its head. And this figure has the action button on its tail to control its jaw. <laughs> Next up is a Ceratosaurus with dark green coloring and black detailing along its back. And this Ceratosaurus has the slide action to open and close its jaw in multiple degrees. <laughs> Let's put this Ceratosaurus right next to the other one, right here. Next up, we've got another mighty Triceratops with a brown body and two tones of blue. You got the dark blue in the back and the light blue in the front. And with this Triceratops, you can actually control the head with the tail. You can twist it back and forth. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you can control its head. Put this Triceratops right next to the Sinoceratops. Here's a different looking dinosaur. This is the Suchomimus. It's got a super long and narrow snout. This dinosaur is blue and yellow in color and it has one action button that you press to control the head. Let's put this Suchomimus next to, you know what? Let's put him on this lower shelf right next to Godzilla. Over here, we've got a small little one. This is Ankylosaurus Bumpy. And as you can see, we've actually got a full-size Ankylosaurus with the same coloring as Bumpy. Let's check both of these out. So Bumpy's pretty small. It doesn't have any action buttons, but you can adjust the head and the legs and the tail as well. But the adult one has an action on it. Let's check that out. Just like many of the other figures we've seen, this Ankylosaurus has a slide action on its back. And can you guess what that does? It swings its tail around. That is really cool. Let's put these Ankylosauruses right on the shelf. Check it out, it is another Carnotaurus. This one is more brightly colored than the other ones that we've seen. You can see all those bumps and spikes on its back. It's got the dark brown on the top, and it's like a red orange on the sides and a gray underbelly. Let's put this Carnotaurus right next to these T-Rexes right over here. This is looking pretty awesome. This is like the carnivore shelf so far. Here we've got another Albertosaurus, but this one has battle damage. You can see it's got the stomach, it's actually pretty squishy. Then you can slide down the ribs and they click in place. And then you can actually cover it up all the way. Let's put this Albertosaurus right next to the other one. Here's another big figure. This is a Stegosaurus with a mostly green body and some brown and tan detailing. That is really cool. Let's put this Stegosaurus next to these Ankylosauruses down here. All right, we've got even another Allosaurus with the slide action for its jaw.
This figure is a dark green color all around its body, and it's got the light tan and red detailing right along its neck, and those red eyes too. Let's put this dinosaur next to this Indominus Rex, right in the front. Here is our last medium-sized dinosaur of the bin. This is a Baryonyx, and it's got green on the belly and sides, and then two tones of brown. We've got the light brown in the back, and the dark brown in the front, and more light brown right on top of its head, too. Let's put this Baryonyx right next to this Baryonyx over here. All right, that shelf is just about full. Let's go ahead and grab these Velociraptors. We've got one, two, and three. Check out the different coloring on these. We've got a bright red and green Velociraptor. We've got a dark gray and yellow Velociraptor. And we've also got a bright orange, yellow, and brown Velociraptor. Yeah. Let's put all of these Velociraptors together on this front shelf right here. Second one right here. And the third one right here. Right next to the Atrociraptor. That's some interesting looking smaller dinosaurs. I believe this is a Protoceratops. Yeah. This one is a super light green on its side and the yellow detailing all over its body. Let's put this Protoceratops right here. Next up, we've got a dark red Minmi with spikes all over its top. Let's put this dinosaur right in the front, right in front of the Spinosaurus. Over here, we've got a Zunoceratops. It's got the two spikes in the front, and it's got a bright green body with the dark gray-blue coloring on the top and all in the front, too. Let's put this Zunoceratops right in front of this Triceratops right here. Check out the spikes on this Sauropelta. It's got a bright red body along the top with brown on the bottom. Let's put this Sauropelta right in front of the Indominus Rex. I believe this dinosaur is a Monolophosaurus. This dinosaur has a light brown body with gray detailing on the top and on its feet too. Let's put this dinosaur right up top here next to the Pyroraptor. Here is a winged dinosaur with battle damage on its wing. That's interesting. This, I believe, is a Pteranodon. Let's put this Pteranodon on top of the Indominus Rex. I think it'll rest there really good. Just a few more dinosaurs left. This is a Tanystrophius. This dinosaur lives in the water. And this figure has an action. When you pull down on the tail, it moves its neck up and down. Let's put this dinosaur way over here next to the Triceratops. Here is another winged dinosaur. This is a Dimorphodon. This dinosaur has a shorter snout compared to the Pteranodon. And you can see that it's got some dark red or maroon coloring right on the underside of its wings. Let's put this flying dinosaur right up top. This T-Rex right here. Next up, we've got a bright green Draco Rex with gray striping along the top of its body. It's got a bunch of horns on its head. You can adjust the neck, the head, the arms, and the legs. I think you can twist the tail too. Let's put this Draco Rex right next to this Minmi. Here is a Stiggy Malak. This dinosaur is a orange red color along its body with darker detailing along all of its body. It's got the light underbelly, it's got the horns on its head, and of course, the super hard head for headbutting. <laughs> And our last dinosaur is a Gallimimus. This dinosaur is a light tan along its body. You can see it's got some striping on the top. Plus, it's got an action button to move the legs back and forth for running. Let's put this right next to the Stiggy Malak up top here.
we're gonna check out is of course the Tyrannosaurus Rex. How could this dinosaur not be in the next Jurassic World movie? And this specific T-Rex figure is actually from the last movie called Jurassic World Dominion. The next dinosaur that I think will be in Jurassic World 4 is the Spinosaurus. This is actually the Camp Cretaceous figure, and it is even a little bit larger than the T-Rex figure. Also, I really hope that they bring back the Indominus Rex. This new dinosaur was made known from the first Jurassic World movie, and this figure is actually the Battle Damage Edition, meaning with this button right here, you can actually hide the battle damage on the side. And there's a button on its tail for the roaring action. Next up for my predictions, I've got the huge Giganotosaurus figure. We saw this dinosaur in the last Jurassic World Dominion movie. And this figure is actually the super colossal Giganotosaurus. So as you can see, it is way larger than any of the other figures that I have. Up next is the mighty Mosasaurus figure. This dinosaur was from the first Jurassic World movie, and I think it is one of the best aquatic dinosaurs that they've shown. So I hope they bring it back. And with this Mosasaurus figure, you can move all the fins around, and open and close the jaw. Over here, we've got another T-Rex figure. This is a Battle Edition T-Rex. I think it might be from Camp Cretaceous, and you can see that it's got some battle damage slashes right on its side. Plus, the figure is fully posable with its arms, legs, tail, neck, and its head, and it has a button to chomp the jaw. Up next for my Jurassic World 4 predictions is the Therizinosaurus. This dinosaur had an epic battle in the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and I wouldn't be surprised if they brought it back again for another fight. This figure has a fully posable body and an attack button on its tail. Over here, we've got the Carnotaurus, one of my favorite carnivores. This figure features posable legs and arms and an attack tail that moves its head and chomps its jaw. This is another T-Rex figure, but this is actually an older figure, I think from the first Jurassic World movie. It has a fully tan body other than a little bit of gray on its face, and it features posable arms, legs, and an attack button on its back for chomping. I think Jurassic World 4 might also have a Pentaceratops. This is one massive dinosaur and it has one of the biggest frills that I've seen. And this figure has two buttons, one for a head ramming action and the other for a torso swinging action. Here's another herbivore figure. This is a Cynoceratops. Jurassic World has a few different versions of this figure. This is in the light gray with some tan and yellow detailing and it features an attack tail that moves its head. My next prediction is another awesome predator. This is an Allosaurus. I believe this figure was released with Camp Cretaceous and it features posable arms, legs, and tail and has a slide lever action on its back for roaring and chomping. Right over here is another Allosaurus figure. I believe this one was released, I think, from Fallen Kingdom. And this Allosaurus features a dark gray body with yellow detailing. It has posable arms and legs and a single button on its back for the chomping action. All right, let's dig into these brand new ones that I just bought. This first box has a Scorpio Venator and an Iguanodon. These are part of the Dino Trackers Roaring Battle Pack. Here is the Scorpio Venator. I have one other Scorpio Venator figure, but this is a whole new color scheme. It's got dark brown, some orange, and then the light underbelly. Plus, it has a chomping action. And here is the Iguanodon figure. I have a few other Iguanodon figures that look pretty similar to this, but once again, this has totally different coloring. This one features a mostly tan body with the brown detailing along the top of its body. And of course, you can press down on its body for a roaring action. Next up to open up from my brand new figures is this Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus. Let's attach that tail. All right, this figure is looking quite a bit different from many of my other Ankylosaurus figures. First off, it's a bit larger than many of my other Ankylosauruses, and it has much more natural coloring with the dark green on top 
and the lighter underbelly. But best of all, like all of the Hammond Collection figures, this figure is super poseable. It looks like its tail has three or four different joints, so you can move it around in a really lifelike way. Of course, you can move the legs around and pose them in all sorts of ways. And coolest of all, you can move its head around and even open and close its mouth. And next up is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus. And here it is. So once again, it is very poseable all over its body. And best of all, this figure actually features a removable frill. So you can actually take it off and replace it with this little piece as if the frills are closed. <laughs> Next up over here, I've got the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. This figure is a lot smaller than many of my other Irexes. I also think Jurassic World might have a Scorpios Rex in it. This figure is quite large and it features two attack buttons, one for the jaw and one for arm slashing. And of course, what would be a Jurassic World movie without a Stegosaurus in it? This figure features the brown body with some green and tan detailing and it has the attack feature where you can swing its tail. I also hope that Jurassic World 4 has some Baryonyxes in it. This Baryonyx is a bright green color with some brown detailing and of course has a roar action. And I also have this older Baryonyx figure from Fallen Kingdom with the orange highlight on the top of its head. Here's another dinosaur specifically from the older Jurassic World movies. This is an Endoraptor. This is the basic figure so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Next up, I've got a Carcharodontosaurus figure. This one is in the light tan yellow coloring with some brown and orange detailing. And it has an attack button on its back for chomping its jaw. Here I've got another Dilophosaurus figure. This figure is a lot larger than the Hammond Collection version and it is the basic version so you can move its frills back and forth as well as its arms, its legs, and its tail. <laughs> Jurassic World 4 has gotta have some winged dinosaurs too. This is a Pteranodon and this figure features the orange coloring along its wings and the brown body. <laughs> Here's another dinosaur from Jurassic World Dominion that I think might show up again. It's an Atrociraptor. And this figure is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Here's another Ankylosaurus figure. You can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the Hammond collection, and it still has some pretty realistic coloring with the green and the gray and the brown. Plus, there's an action button on this one for swinging the tail. Next up is another Dilophosaurus figure, but this one is battery operated, so let's hear some sounds from it. This figure over here is an old Velociraptor figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It features poseable legs and poseable arms. Next up, also from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, is this basic Pyroraptor figure. And I really hope they bring this one back for the fourth movie. This Pyroraptor is the basic figure, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Over here, I've got another Indominus Rex figure. This one is older, and I believe it was called the Bite and Thrash Indominus Rex. <laughs> Check it out, another Ankylosaurus figure. This one features much brighter coloring all over its body and has a slide lever action on its back to swing its tail around. This figure set is from Jurassic World Dominion. It features a Parasaurolophus and Owen with his lasso. <laughs> Up next is another Pteranodon figure. This one is a whole lot smaller, but it has some pretty cool detailing along its wings and a button on its back for flapping the wings. And of course, one that I'm pretty sure that they'll have in the next movie is Velociraptor Blue. And not only that, but we also saw Velociraptor Beta in the last movie as well. So I think that they'll be bringing these Velociraptors back. I've also got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one has a light green body with a darker detailing along the top and features poseable arms, legs, and a mouth. And this second Velociraptor features a dark gray body with yellow detailing and the poseable arms, legs, and jaw. My next prediction is a Stigimaloc dinosaur. This figure specifically is pretty small and has a dark body, but some dark purple coloring along its neck and its head, and it features a headbutting action when you press down on the tail. 
We saw some Apatosaurus figures in the last movie, but I think that they might bring back the Brachiosaurus dinosaurs. This figure is a baby Brachiosaurus and has a light green body with a darker green along the top and has a poseable jaw, neck, and legs. Over here is another Parasaurolophus figure. I believe this one is also from Jurassic World Dominion and it features a poseable head, arms, and legs. I've predicted a few other horned dinosaurs, but I think Jurassic World will also have Triceratops dinosaurs in it. This figure is a lot smaller than many of the other horned dinosaurs that I have, and it features battle damage that you can open and close on the side. And here is another Atrociraptor figure. This one's a lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier, but it has a darker red coloring with the gray detailing, and it has battle damage that you can open and close on the side. Right over here is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. It has the brown body with the blue detailing, and it still has the frills on the front that you can open and close. And last of all is a teeny tiny Spinosaurus figure. It still has the giant spine on its back, and it has a chomping action as well. I just bought some Jurassic Park sets off of eBay. The first one is the Alan Grant with double-barreled Bola launcher from the Jurassic Park new series two. Let's check this out. So there's Dr. Alan Grant. We've got a variety of tools here as well as a little dinosaur. And way up at the top here, you can see that it's some type of claw contraption or something used for trapping dinosaurs, it looks like. Now, I'm not gonna open this up because this is a collectible and I wanna keep it in this condition since it's unopened right now. But I still have another figure from eBay that I just bought that we're gonna check out as well. This is the Compstagnanthus, or at least I think that's how you pronounce it, codenamed Lasher from Jurassic Park Chaos Effect series. And this dinosaur is super colorful. It's got some light blue green over its body with the black. It's got some yellow, it's got some orange. It's got blue right on its nose. So this will be super cool to add to my collection too. And as you can see, it is a combination dinosaur of a Compsognathus, a Stegosaurus, and an African tree frog. That is pretty wild. As you'll notice with basically all of these figures, these figures are discontinued, so you won't be able to find them new anywhere. You might be able to find them on eBay or something like that. But this first one is a Jurassic Park Allosaurus. And this figure actually has multiple pieces of battle damage that you can completely take off. And this front battle damage actually has multiple layers. You can take off the ribs to see the stomach underneath, and then you can just cover it back up with the skin, just like that. You can also remove the thigh on this dinosaur, see the flesh underneath, as well as on the tail. You can rip off a piece of the tail and see the bone and flesh underneath too. Back here, we've got one of the original Tyrannosaurus Rexes from Jurassic Park. This figure has some pretty unique coloring over its body. It's got the clay red with the black spots and stripes. It's got the lighter underbelly. It originally had sound effects, and its whole body is a soft rubber, which is a common theme with the older figures. Right here, we've got a T-Rex from Jurassic Park The Lost World. This is the Thrasher Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it also has a soft rubber body aside from the arms and the legs. And with this T-Rex, you can actually wiggle the tail to control the face and the neck. Move it back and forth. All right, I know you've been keeping your eye on these huge T-Rexes on the side. This super colossal T-Rex is one of a kind, and that is because it is actually custom colored. It's got a light tan body all around. It's got some interesting shadowing and detail all over. It's also got some super dark red eyes and some interestingly colored teeth too. So those are darker teeth than what's normal. So while you may be able to get a super colossal T-Rex, you will not be able to buy one that is this color. Next up for the one of a kind super colossal dinosaurs is this T-Rex. And this has some of the craziest custom coloring out of any figures that I've seen. It looks like a fire T-Rex. Got the bright red over its belly and sides. It's got the 
glowing orange right next to the black, and then the black top. This is a super cool, one-of-a-kind T-Rex. And for our final one-of-a-kind, custom-colored, super colossal dinosaurs is this Velociraptor. This, I think, has some of the best custom coloring out of any figure that I have. It is so detailed and so well done. It's got the black body with these brown stripes, and there's even these little gold specks along its brown stripes as well. My favorite part, though, are the eyes. These are incredibly detailed. It's like a gold eye, but then it's got red towards the center, and then the black pupil. You will not be able to find another super colossal velociraptor with this coloring anywhere. Here we've got a Jurassic Park Stegosaurus with battle damage right on the shoulder. Mm. This figure has a somewhat soft rubber body. The tail is especially rubbery, so you can swing that back and forth with those spikes at the end. And it has a very natural green and brown and light tan coloring all over its body. So it really blends into the jungle. This giant T-Rex, I believe, is the Jurassic Park Lost World Bull Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex has some pretty unique coloring with this green-blue color on the sides. It's got some light brown on its legs as well as along the top of its body. It's got some marble eyes that are green. And I don't have the piece anymore, unfortunately, but originally it was able to swallow, I think, a cage that had a man inside. So this thing could actually swallow humans or dinosaurs or whatever you want and you can release it from the stomach right in there. Next up of my rarest figures is this Jurassic Park Lost World Pteranodon that was nicknamed the Steel Beak. This figure's pretty old and fragile now, but it's one of the few figures that has a fabric wing on it, as well as spring-loaded joints for the wings, so it can swing forward and it swings back just like that. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Parasaurolophus. This figure's in pretty good condition for how old it is. It's got the light tan body with the darker brown stripes along the top, and this figure actually has an action button on its back used for running. Here we've got the original Jurassic Park Triceratops, and this figure has some huge battle damage on its side. You can see some flesh and some bone in it as well. This figure also has the soft rubbery body like many of the super old figures and it has an action that when you squeeze its stomach, it swings its head upward. Here is a dinosaur figure that although it's more recent, it's still pretty hard to find and pretty rare. This is an extreme chomping Spinosaurus from Jurassic World. This figure has the dark ground body with the light underbelly and the red spine and face. And of course, it comes with the button at the top of its head for the chomping. Right here is another one of the original Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rexes. This is a smaller figure. It probably only stands about nine or 10 inches tall. It's got some battle damage on the side and it has the soft rubbery body all throughout aside from its arms and its legs. This super bright dinosaur, I believe, is from Jurassic Park The Lost World and is actually a Chaos Effect Anki Loranodon. This figure has some super bright colors, bright green and the bright purple, plus it's got a super bright orange eye as well. And there's actually a hidden action button on its back used to move its tail. Over here is another more recent figure from Jurassic World, but is still pretty rare and pretty hard to find. This is the hybrid Indominus Rex. It's got the bright red over its body, it's got some gold, and the classic gray color for the Indominus Rex. Plus it has a few action buttons, the first that you press down to stick out its spines, and the second to pull down the arm, and it roars. Check this one out. Here is another discontinued Jurassic World figure. This figure is fairly rare and is actually a hybrid Tyrannosaurus Rex. Check out these spines that pop out on the top of its head and on its back. Plus, another unique feature about this Tyrannosaurus Rex is this unique coloring right along the side of its body. And the action button that springs out the spines also activates the jaw. This is another Chaos Effect dinosaur from Jurassic Park. This is the Velociraptorix, and this dinosaur has some really unique features. 
What stands out the most to me are these wings right on the Velociraptor's arms. That's super interesting. And it's got these spikes right along the top of its back and its head as well. And this Velociraptorix has an action that when you pull the leg, it swings its arms up and down and its head moves as well. Next up, we've got another figure from Jurassic World. This is a hybrid special edition Ankylosaurus. And the most special part about this figure is that it actually has part of its shell that you can take off to reveal the normal shell underneath. This removable shell is super bright and reflective. It's got some bright green and purple in the spikes as well. And you can just plop it right back on. Next up in my rare figures, we've got the Jurassic Park Amargo Spinus. I think this figure looks somewhat similar to the unopened figure that we saw at the very beginning of this video. It's got the long neck, it's got the spines all over, and it's got a few action buttons actually that when you move the leg, it actually sticks up its spines on its back, on its neck, and it opens its jaws too. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Chasmosaurus. This figure looks similar to a Triceratops. It's got many of the same features. It's got the horns in the front. And this figure also has an action that when you pull its leg, it moves its head up and down. This is another Jurassic World hybrid figure. This, I believe, is a hybrid between a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops. But it's also got some super bright and unique coloring with the bright blue on its side, the dark blue on its legs, and the gold right along the top and its horns too. Here is another Jurassic World hybrid figure. This is a hybrid between a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Dilophosaurus. And once again, it's also got some super bright coloring with the bright orange on its sides. It's got some gold along the top too. This is a Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. And let me tell you, I think it looks a lot different than the Spinosauruses that Jurassic World is releasing now. But it's still got the huge spine along its back, of course, and it has some pretty bright coloring. It's got the bright green along its body with the gray as well. Next up is a fairly large figure from Jurassic Park. This is a Utah Raptor. It's got the orange body with the black detailing along the top and the lighter underbelly. And a nice detail on this figure is that you can actually move the claw up and down on its feet. Over here, we've got a few Jurassic Park Baryonyx figures. These are quite a bit different than the new Jurassic World Baryonyxes that are being released now. Their bodies are a lot more thin. They've got shorter legs, and it looks like they've got longer necks too. Next up, we've got two Velociraptors from Jurassic Park with different features. This first one is a lot smaller and you can move the arms and the legs, but there's no action button. But on this second Velociraptor figure, there's an action button that when you move the leg, you can hear a sound effect. It's really quiet, so you probably can't hear it on the camera. But its head also used to move up and down as well. Here are some other interesting dinosaurs from Jurassic World. This is a Dilophosaurus with battle damage on the side, and it is super brightly colored. We've also got a smaller Spinosaurus with battle damage on the side that you can control by moving the tail around too. And for the last two dinosaurs of my rare collection, first we've got a Jurassic Park baby T-Rex with a broken leg feature. And we've also got this, I think it might be a Baryonyx, it might be an Allosaurus, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's from Jurassic World, and it's got the battle damage on the side, and the tail controls the head too. Let's start with this bin on the right. The very first one is a battle damage T-Rex with the orange body and the brown top. This T-Rex is dark green in color. It's got some black detailing along its back and it's got the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. This is the Yang Chuanosaurus from the Dominion series. It's got the green body with brown detailing and the orange crown on the top of its head. Here we've got another T-Rex with the soft brown body and the darker brown along the top. And of course the button on the top of its head for chomping and roaring. This Dominion figure is a Siamosaurus. It's got a dark body with the red spine and the red head. 
Up next, we've got a T-Rex figure, but this is actually a hybrid T-Rex. You can tell because it has spines that pop out of its back by pressing this button. And the jaw opens and closes as well. Here is another T-Rex figure, but this is a gray-brown T-Rex. It's got some darker brown along the top. It's very adjustable, and you can open and close the mouth too. Way back here is a camouflage T-Rex. It's got some sound effects too. You can open and close the mouth, and you can do a chomping effect too. This is a sarcosagus. It's got some short legs, but it's got the blue body with purple and orange detailing on the top. This super bright dinosaur is another T-Rex. It is custom colored, so it is a bright red. It's got some orange and black as well. Over here is a Scorpios Rex that I'm sure you recognize from the Jurassic World movie. It has two action buttons, one for the jaw and one for the arms. Next up, we've got a Tarbosaurus figure. This is gray and a darker gray. It's got those huge spikes along its spine and it's got the red chin and neck too. This is a Seatz Micarerum. It's got the orange body with the blue detailing on its back and head and it's got some gray detailing along the back of its body. Back here is a Carcharodontosaurus with the blue body and the brown and orange detailing along its back all the way up to around its eyes. Here is a Rajasaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It has a dark body with some lighter coloring along its neck and it has an action button for chomping. Next up, we've got an old Indominus Rex figure. This one is smaller. It's got some battle damage on the side. You can open and close and you can use the tail to chomp the mouth. Here is a super bright dinosaur. This is the Suchomimus. It's got a bright yellow body with the brown detailing along its spine and it has two action buttons. One for the jaws and one to swing the tail. Here is another bright dinosaur. This is a Metriacanthosaurus. It's got the bright red body with some brown detailing on its back and some orange on its head. Here's another Metriacanthus figure. This has a yellow body with some green coloring along the top and it has the action button on its back for the jaw. This is a super cool looking Allosaurus figure. It's got the gray body with the yellow detailing all over. It's got some awesome looking red right above its eyes and it's got an action button for the jaw. Right over here is the Majingasaurus with a green, yellow, and blue body and you can use the tail to control the neck. Here is a Cryolophosaurus figure. This has a bright yellow body with brown detailing and orange along the top of its body. Here's another small Indominus Rex figure. This has battle damage on the side that you can't open or close, but you can still use the tail to open and close the mouth. Next up is the Irritator. This has a brown, blue, and light blue body, and you can use the tail to control the neck. I've got a Baryonyx figure here with a brown, blue, and orange coloring on its body, and it's got an action button on its back for the jaw. Next up is another Allosaurus figure. This one has a brown and blue body, and it has a slide lever action to control the jaw. This Jurassic World figure is a Baryonyx. It's got the gray, white, and blue detailing on its body, and it has the slide lever action to control the jaw too. Next up, I've got the Jurassic World Hammond Collection Parasaurolophus. This figure is a light tan color. It's got some bright orange running all the way down its back. And of course, it's got the iconic horn at the top of its head. <laughs> Here is another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Baryonyx. It is super adjustable and poseable, and it's got some pretty cool detailing all along its body. This is a basic Spinosaurus figure. It's got the dark green body with some white detailing, and of course, the red along its spine and all around its eyes. Here is the Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green coloring with black detailing on the top and the slide lever action to control the jaw. Here is another Ceratosaurus figure, but this one is in the brown and orange coloring, and it's got a button at the top of its back to control the jaw. 
Next up, we've got the Extreme Chompin' Carnotaurus. This is a little figure, but it has a huge head, and it has a button to control the eyes, and a button for chomping, too. This figure is from the Amber Collection. I believe this one is Velociraptor Tiger. As you can tell, it's got the stripes all over its body with the orange, making it a pretty bright dinosaur. I've got a few Dimetrodon figures in here too. This first one is a light blue with a red spine. I've also got this green Dimetrodon with an even brighter red spine. Yeah. Here is a small Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. Next up, I've got a few Monolophosaurus figures. This first one is a soft green color with darker detailing. And this other figure is a brown Monolophosaurus with gray detailing on its body. Here is a baby Brachiosaurus in the light green color. Got a couple horned small dinosaurs here. This first one is the Zunoceratops. It's got some bright coloring on the side of its body. And this one is the Battle Damage Triceratops. I've got a few small Dilophosaurus figures in here as well. This first one is brown, blue, and white, especially on the front. And this other one is a soft green, and it's got some orange, red, and yellow on its body. This is the Battle Damage Coelurus figure. You can see that you can press this button on its back to activate the battle damage on the side. Let's see what else I got. I've got another Monolophosaurus figure. This one is a bright green color. It's got some red on the front. And this is a Herrerasaurus. It is a gray-blue color with the white detailing along the top of its body. Of course, I've got a few Velociraptor figures in here in this first bin. This first one is a green color. It has a button on its back to activate the arms. And this second Velociraptor figure has its legs spring-loaded so you can actually launch it into the air. And the last one's in this first bin. We still have one more bin to go. I've got a handful of herbivore figures. This first figure is a Minmi in the green coloring. I've also got a Sora Pelta in the red and gray coloring with the huge spikes. Here is Ankylosaurus Bumpy from Camp Cretaceous. And can you guess the name of this herbivore dinosaur? Let me know down in the comments below. Now it's time for this second bin that will complete my 100 Jurassic World dinosaur figure haul. And I've actually got some brand new ones that we're gonna open up before we get into the bin. This first one is the Pro Ceratosaurus figure. All right, so this figure is mostly red. It's got some yellow detailing along the top of its back and neck. And it's got some lime green eyes too. It's pretty cool. Next up is the Jurassic World Velociraptor figure. This Velociraptor is orange in color. It's got some brown detailing along the top and it's got those bright yellow eyes. Next up is the Jurassic World Atrociraptor figure. This Atrociraptor figure is the white and brown one that I'm sure you recognize from the movie, and it's got those evil looking red eyes. And next up, we've got the Jurassic World Pyroraptor. I'm sure you recognize this figure from the Jurassic World Dominion movie as well. It's got a black and red body, and it's got those yellow orange eyes too. Here we've got the small Sound Surge Giganotosaurus. It still has the green coloring with the black detailing along the top, and it comes with some sound effects. Here is another Giganotosaurus figure, but a whole lot larger. Still has the same coloring with a bit more detail with the black, I think. And it's got two actions. The first is for swinging the torso back and forth. And the second is for the jaws. This is a Spinosaurus figure that is dark green in color, just like the one we saw earlier, and it has the red detailing along its spine and all over its head too. Next up, we've got a Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It is tan in color and it has a button on its back to activate the jaw. Here we've got another Carcharodontosaurus figure. We saw one earlier that had totally different coloring. This one is tan in color and it's got brown and orange detailing all along its back up to its head. 
This is a giant Indominus Rex figure with extreme battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off by pressing a button. I've got another Indominus Rex figure here. This one does not have the battle damage on the side, but instead the button activates the claws for slashing. Here is one of my coolest Spinosaurus figures. It has the most intricate detailing and coloring out of all of my Spinosaurus figures. It's got some blue on the spine. Its eyes are a bright green color. And of course, it's got the button at the top of its head for opening and closing the jaw. Here's another Sarcosagus figure. This one is green on the sides and belly and clay red along the top. <laughs> Next up is an Allosaurus figure. This one is dark green with white and red detailing along its back and neck. And it's got the slide lever action to activate the jaw and sound effects. This is the Endoraptor. This figure actually has two actions. The first is on its tail. When you press that, it swings its arms shut. It's also got a button on the bottom of its tail to activate the jaw and you can use the tail to swing the torso around too. This is a Mega Raptor figure from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. It's got some huge claws in the front and it's got a red and blue body. Down here, we've got a Stegosaurus figure that is gray blue and it has some darker detailing along the top. And it has an action button to activate the tail for swinging back and forth. Here is another Scorpios Rex figure, but this is the basic edition, so you can't open and close the jaw, but you can still move the arms, the legs, and the tail. Back here is the Ampelosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got a bright clay red body with the brown detailing on top, and you can use the tail to control the neck and the jaws too. I believe this dinosaur is called an Amargosaurus. It's got the brown body with black detailing and the red all along its neck down to its tail too. And it's got two action buttons, one to activate the neck and one to activate the tail. This is a big Velociraptor blue figure. You can see the iconic blue all the way down its back and of course the yellow eyes too. Here we've got another Allosaurus figure. This one is tan, dark blue, and bright blue, and it has two action buttons, one for the jaw and one for the arms. Here is a large Dilophosaurus figure. It has a battle damage button on the side, and it's got some super bright colors all over. It's got green, yellow, orange, and it's got some brown detailing all along its body too. If I remember correctly, this is an Iguanodon figure. It's got some detailing of tan and darker brown along the top, and it has an action button that moves its head up and down. This is a hybrid Triceratops Stegosaurus. It's got some battle damage on the side, and its entire body is super bright. It's got blue, it's got dark blue, and it's got a bunch of gold all over its body too. This is a Suchomimus in the dark blue color with the yellow detailing along its spine. And it's got one action button to activate the jaw. I've got another large Velociraptor figure in here. This one is the orange color and this actually might be the same one that I opened up earlier on. It's got the brown detailing on the top and the yellow eyes too. This figure I believe is the Proceratosaurus. It's got a tan body with gray detailing and the red nose and orange eyes. Here we've got another Stegosaurus figure. This one is in a light blue green color. It's got darker detailing along the top. And of course it's got the action button for swinging the tail back and forth. This is a Triceratops figure. It's got the clay red coloring with the brown detailing and it's got an action button on its back to move the head up and down. This is a small Spinosaurus figure, and it is super brightly colored with the blue and red along its spine. It's also got some battle damage, and you can use the tail to move the head around too. I've got two small T-Rex figures in here. This first one though is actually a hybrid T-Rex, a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus, and it's got this super bright orange and gold all over its body. And this second smaller T-Rex figure is green with the battle damage on the side, and you can use the tail to control the mouth just like the other one. Our second to last dinosaur is a hybrid Stegosaurus Triceratops. 
This one is brown in color, it's got some yellow detailing on its legs, and it's got the battle damage on the side. And our final dinosaur of the 100 Jurassic World dinosaur figures is the Nasutoceratops. With the dark blue body, it's got the green legs and the red detailing along the top. Well, let's get started with this first T-Rex front and center. This is the stop and escape T-Rex. You can twist the tail to stop its feet up and down. And you can press the button on its back to lift its head up for a roar. From the Spinosaurus side, we have this Spinosaurus figure. This is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus with the dark green body and the classic red spine. And you can use the button on its head to open and close its mouth. On the T-Rex side, we've got this smaller T-Rex figure with the brown and gray coloring. It's pretty adjustable. You can move the arms, legs, and tail, and you can move the neck around, so it's actually double jointed. And it has a button on the top of its head to open and close the mouth. The next Spinosaurus is another Spinosaurus figure, but with totally different coloring. This one is actually custom colored, so it is a lot more detailed and a bit crazy with the coloring. It's really cool. And it has the same features of the movable arms, legs, tail, and head, and the button at the top of its head to open and close the jaw. On the T-Rex side, we've got one of the coolest figures yet. This is the new Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This is one of the most poseable figures I have. You can twist its torso, its head, its neck, its tail is double jointed, and its face is one of the most realistic that I have. Check out those marble eyes. I really love that feature. From the Spinosaurus side, we've got an Ichthyovenator dinosaur. This dinosaur, of course, has the huge spine on its back and stands on its two legs. It's got some super bright green coloring and some darker green as well. And this Spinosaurus figure has an action that when you press down on its back, it chomps its mouth. On the T-Rex side, we've got a Terran T-Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has a tearing feature with a button on its back. Plus, it even has a second button for swinging the tail back and forth too. And the tail is double jointed. Here is another giant Spinosaurus figure. This one is the classic Camp Cretaceous figure with the brown and red spine. And it's got the orange eyes and the button on the top of its head to open and close its mouth. Next up, we've got a new figure from the Tyrannosaurus family. This is the Sino Tyrannus figure. Let's check it out, but before we do, be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, here it is, and it comes with this dino tracking headpiece right here, which is pretty cool. It's got some interesting texturing all over its body. It's got some spikes at the top. It's got a double jointed tail, and you can see that there are two buttons on its back. The first button activates its tail for swinging back and forth, and the second button activates its jaw and its neck too. From the Spinosaurus side, we have a Suchomimus figure with the yellow and brown coloring, and this figure has two action buttons. The first operates the chomping of the jaw, and the second activates the swinging of the tail. <laughs> This next T-Rex that I've got is a huge one, and it is one of my favorite colored T-Rexes. This is actually custom colored, and it looks like a camo green color all over its body. And on this figure, you can use the tail to lift its head up for a roar, or you can move the tail for a chomping action too. Here's another T-Rex figure. This one is a bit older. It has a rubberized tail and a chomping action when you move the tail. The next Spinosaurus figure is a custom Hammond Collection Spinosaurus figure. Check out the cool coloring, it's got the red, and of course the red spine, and a very adjustable arms, legs, and head as well. Next up, we've got a battle damage T-Rex figure in the orange and brown coloring. You can see the battle damage on its neck, on its chin, on its leg, and everywhere else as well. And like many of the other T-Rex figures, you can use the button at the top of its head to open and close its mouth. The next Spinosaurus is the Irritator. This dinosaur has a smaller spine running down its back, and on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around. Plus, you can manually open the mouth as well. 
Here's another Spinosaur. This is the Siamosaurus figure. It's got the dark blue coloring, a huge bright red spine, and you can use the tail to move its head up and down as well as chomp its jaw shut. Here's one of my oldest Spinosaurus figures. This is from Jurassic Park. It's much smaller and designed very differently. It's got some bright coloring, the huge spine, and a much shorter jaw than many of the new Spinosaurus figures. Here is another classic T-Rex figure from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the brown body and the tail that you can use to operate the neck and the head and open and close its jaws too. Next up, we've got a smaller Spinosaurus figure. This is the basic edition. It's got the dark green with the red spine, and you can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail on this figure. Our last T-Rex of the collection is this baby T-Rex, a whole lot smaller. It's got some bright green coloring though, with some cool detailing along the top, and you can use the tail to open and close the mouth. And last of all is this older Jurassic World Spinosaurus figure. It's a whole lot smaller than many of my other Spinosaurus figures. It's got some battle damage on the side, and you can use the tail to move the head around and open and close the jaw. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.